to Mr. Hassan's mass channel. I'm now answering question number 11 from the I am from the International A level at Excel, Pure Math Mathematics P1, January 2023 exam. This question is the last question on the paper, and we're told about a curve. C, which has equation y equals f of x, and x is greater than zero. We're told that the second derivative, it's like when you have f of x and you differentiate once and then twice, is given by 4x plus 1 over root x. We're also told that the point P has x coordinate 4 and lies on the curve C. So on the curve, this point um, lies, point P lies on the curve and it has x coordinate 4. And we're also told that the tangent to the curve at P has equation y equals 3x plus 4. So the tangent to the curve at P has equation y equals 3x plus 4. Um, and we're told to find an equation for the normal to C at P. So just say we had a curve. This is our curve C, just like a portion of it. It's just a, a sketch. It's not, of course, accurate. Now, we know that there's a tangent that has an equation y equals 3x plus 4. So it has a positive gradient, something like this. And... It touches the curve at point P, which has x coordinate 4, which we know the x coordinate is 4, but we don't know the y coordinate. So this is 4 something, let's call it yp. And I know that this equation, the equation of this tangent is y equals 3x plus 4. So what we have to find is the equation of the normal to the curve, which is a line which passes through the same point P, but at an angle of 90 degrees to the tangent. So this is the normal. This is the line which is the normal to the curve. We need to find the normal, the, the equation of this line. Now the normal, just like the tangent, is a straight line. To find the equation of a straight line, we need two pieces of information. The first thing we need is the gradient of the normal. And the second thing we need is a point that lies on the normal. And we can see that's a point P, which has a coordinates 4 and Y, which we have to find. So... The first part is pretty easy because I know that the gradient of the tangent is equal to 3 because y equals mx plus c, this is m, the gradient of the tangent is 3 and we know that when two lines are perpendicular their gradients are negative reciprocal. So the gradient of the normal is going to be negative one third. When you multiply the gradients of two perpendicular lines the product is always minus 1. So the gradient of the tangent and normal are always negative reciprocals. So I have the gradient of the tangent, which is 3, which is like 3 over 1. So I change its sign, it becomes negative, and I write it upside down. So it's minus 1 third. So that's the gradient of the, the normal. So I know this is minus 1 third. Now I need to find the equation or the, the coordinate, the y coordinate of P. Now what I can do is I can use the fact that P not only lies on the curve, it also lies on the tangent to the curve, because the tangent to the curve touches the curve at the point P. So the point P satisfies this equation. So if I replace x equals 4 into this equation, it's going to give me the y coordinate of P. So when x equals 4, y equals 3 times 4 plus 4, which is going to be 12 plus 4, which is 16. So I know that the equation or, or the point P is 4 and 16. So this is yp. This is the y coordinate of P, which is equal to 16. So now I know this information here. I know this information here. I am able now to find the equation of the line um, of the normal. So the equation of the normal, I can use the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's what I like to use normally. So I have y minus the y coordinate of the point P, which is 16, equals m, which is the, um, the gradient minus one third times x minus 4. So this is you know, the, um, the step that you can use to continue. Now, if we continue, we can express this in two ways. It didn't tell us how to express it. I can express it in the form y equals mx plus c. I can express it in the form ax plus bx plus c equals zero, where a, b, c are integers. Those are the normal ways you can express it. I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. Let's start with this way here, um, where there's no fraction. So what I would do is I'll multiply both sides by three. So I have three y minus 48, 16, that's 30 plus 18, that's right, equals, and I have a minus 1 left here, so minus x and plus 4. And then it's always best to keep the x term in the positive side, so I'll add x to both sides, so I have x plus 3y 
minus 48 minus 4 is minus 52 equals 0. So that's one answer. We can leave the answer like this. That's fine. If you want to express it in this form, y equals mx plus c, from this stage here, we can just basically expand the bracket here. So we have y minus 16 equals minus a third x plus 4 over 3. And then I have to add 16 to both sides. So I have y equals minus 1 third x plus 4 over 3 plus 16. Now 16 is 48 over 3. That's 16. So you end up with y equals minus 1 third x plus 52 over 3. So that's another way we can express the answer. Both of them are perfectly fine. Express it in both ways. And those would be perfectly good ways to express your answer. Because the question does not specify how to express your answer. So both of these are good answers. So there's your answer to part A of this question. Um, now for part B. It says, find f of x, writing your answer in its simplest form. So what we've learned from the last part of the question is the point P is 4 and 16. Okay, that's what's going to help us. I think that, that might help us here. So we got to find f of x. So what we have here is f double dash of x. We have f double dash of x is equal to, now the way this is written, um, it's not really help, going to help us to integrate. We need to integrate to get our answer. So we're going to write this. Now we have 1 over the square root of x, which is the same as 1 over, in index form, x to the power of a half. I want to write this in the numerator, so I have to write it with a negative power. All right, like the reciprocal. So that's x to the power of negative a half. So you have 4x plus x to the power of negative a half. That is the expression for the second differential in a form that's easy for us to integrate. Now I'm going to integrate this. Now when I integrate this the first time, it's not going to give me f of x. It's going to give me f dash of x, which is like the gradient function. So I'm going to integrate 4x plus x to the power of negative a half with respect to x. And that will give me my first differential, okay, which is the gradient. This is the gradient function. So now when I integrate, I have to add 1 to the power. So this, this is a power of 1. It becomes a power of 2. And divide by the new power. The same thing with this. I have to add 1 to the power. So minus a half plus 1 is positive a half. Divided by a half. And then I must write the constant of integration. You must write the constant of integration. You can't just integrate it twice straight away. You have to write the constant of integration for the first step and find what that is and then continue so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to find what that constant of integration is uh, first let's simplify this a little bit so you have f dash of x equals that's four over two which is two so two x to the power of two and when you divide by a half it's like multiplying by its reciprocal so it's multiplying by two which is two x to the power of a half plus c now i know that this is the equation of the tangent that means the gradient of the curve at P is equal to 3. Okay, the gradient to the curve at P is equal to 3. So that means basically when f dash of x is equal to 3, the gradient function is equal to 3 when x equals 4, the point P, because the point P is the point 4, 16. So when x equals 4, the gradient is 3. So what that means is I can say that f dash of 4 must give me 3. When I replace 4 into this equation, what comes out must be 3. And that's going to help me find what C is. So I'm going to now replace the x with 4. So I have 2 times 4 squared plus 2 times, now this remember this means the square root of x, so the square root of 4, plus C, and that's going to give me 3. So that should help me find what C is now. So that's 2 times 16, that's 32, plus 2 times 2, which is 4, plus c equals 3, so that's 36 plus c equals 3, so we can say here, therefore c is equal to 3 minus 36, which is negative 33, so we can now say that the gradient function, f dash of x, is 2x squared plus 2x to the power of a half minus 33. Now what's left for us to do is to find what we have to find, you know, that's the original question, find f of x. So that's going to be found by integrating this one more time. So we know that f of x, the actual function, is the integral of f dash of x, which is 2x squared plus 2x to the power of a half minus 33, integrated with respect to x. 
Now, when I integrate this, it's going to give me 2x cubed over 3, because you add 1 to the power divided by the new power, plus 2x to the power of, this is 3 over 2, divided by 3 over 2. So you add 1 to the power, gives you 3 over 2 divided by the new power, which is 3 over 2, minus, and the constant term gains an x, and then you have plus the constant of integration. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this a different letter D, because we really use C here. It doesn't really matter. If you put plus C, I'm sure they wouldn't mind, but it's just more complete and more proper that you give it a different name because you call this thing C and that has this value. So in the same question, I'll, I'll call this another letter. I could call it anything I want. I've just called it D because that's the next number in the alphabet. So that's, that's the reason. So now this is F of X. Now we know that this curve passes through the point P, which has coordinates 4, 16. Right, so that what, what, what this tells us is that's the x value and that's the y value for this point, which satisfies the equation of this curve. So let's first of all let's simplify this uh, equation a bit. Let's uh, simplify it and write it in a more proper form. So this is like two over three x cubed plus. Now here we have to um, divide by three over two, which is multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's multiplying by two thirds. So two times two thirds is four over three x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 33x plus d. So as I was saying, we know that when x equals 4, y or f of x is equal to 16. So basically they're saying when you put x into here as 4, what comes out is 16. So what I'm going to do is I'll put 2 thirds times 4 cubed plus 4 thirds times, and this is basically what this means is this is the square root of 4 cubed. Okay, this is the root, this is the power. Okay, minus 33 times 4 plus d gives us 16. Now that should help us find what d is. So this is 2 over 3 times 4 cubed, that's 2 times 64 over 3. I'll just use my calculator for this, make life easy for ourselves, why not? We've shown the steps fine, we don't need to... Um, torture ourselves anymore. So we've got 2 times 2 times 4 cubed. Okay, and that's divided by, oops, what am I doing? 2 times 4 cubed divided by, I'll just do it like this, 2 over 3 times 4 cubed, exactly how it's written there, 4 cubed. Okay, and then I've got um, plus 4 over 3 times, and this is the square root of 4 cubed, the square root of 4 cubed, right? And then I've got minus, I'll press the, the arrow sign to get out of the square root now, so minus 33 times 4, and that gives me minus 236 over 3, so minus 236 over 3 plus d equals 16. So we can say that d equals 16 plus 236 over 3, so d is equal to, so we take this answer, we change its sign, and we add it to 16, which gives you 284 over 3, 284 over 3, Okay, and therefore we can say in the end, f of x is equal to, so we got this equation, but with this d at the end, so it's 2 over 3x cubed, plus 4 over 3x to the power of 3 over 2, and we have minus 33x, plus 284 over 3, and that is the answer to this question, which is the last question on this paper. Okay, and that completes this paper of P1, January 2023. Other questions from this paper can be found on the playlist that will appear in this region here at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of basically, this is, I guess, integration and its applications can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. 
you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video here to, um, that will help you um, navigate my channel to use it more efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.